Well, ladies and gentlemen, we got another disaster to talk about in gaming. Get your pitch and forks ready. Grab onto your controllers. Hold on to your dear controllers, everybody. Don't let it go. I repeat, don't let it go because we got another drama to talk about, okay? Like the video if you think there are two genders. Dislike the video if you think there are 5,000 genders. Because earlier today, a lot of gamers went into coma, man. Everybody be looking like this, okay? As soon as people got that call, as soon as you heard that bring, 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 bring. You heard that call? Uh, yeah, man, it was just like Joe over after that one because check this out, right? So you got the Concord situation happening. You got the BBC Samurai situation happening, right? Yeah, and Ubisoft has been using black people as shields, LGBT people as shields to being racist towards the Asian people. We know that's going on, right? And a lot of people are waking up. A lot of gamers are waking up, right? Because they put the only black guy in the game and made him uh, gay. We talked about it previously. If Yasuke, the real person, if he was, then makes sense to make him gay, right? But he was not. Ultimately disrespecting, stereotyping him. And, and we still got people, uh, very few people right now, right? That are defending Ubisoft. They are saying that, but like, it's not historically accurate. It's just a video game, bruh. And I get it, right? Like, listen, some people are gonna have different opinions. That's personally, and, and that is perfectly fine, right? Uh, if you like the game, go for it. If you don't like the game, don't buy it. Simple as that. That's where I'm at. But also people have the right to dislike the game or like the game for whatever reason they choose to, okay? I got a bunch of stuff that I want to share with you, but ultimately what went down today is uh, is gonna knock your socks off, right? So I've read your guys' comments. I always read your guys' comments, uh, and, and a lot of you are now waking up. A lot of people, generally speaking, are waking up, but there's still very few people that are saying that, hey, it's just, uh, it's not historically accurate, bro. It's just a fiction, bro. It's just a fiction. Here's the thing, though. Ubisoft did say Assassin's Creed is historically accurate, okay? Yeah, they did say that, then they changed it to historical fiction when all this drama happened. Okay, forget about all of this, okay? Like, because some people would be like, where's the proof, man? Where's the proof? I understand that. You don't want to believe it. You don't want to believe it. But check this out, okay? What went down today? Crazy, okay? Crazy. Japanese YouTuber explains why the Japanese are calling Ubisoft to immediately discontinue the creation of Assassin's Creed. Now, the game is not going to be canceled, right? It's getting canceled by people. Absolutely, yes, Ubisoft is getting cancelled in terms of the cancel culture, and this time I understand where people are coming from. Check this out, okay? This is what happened. So, Bainwa was asked. Bainwa, not Chris Bainwa uh, from WWE, right? This is the Charles Bainwa man. Charles Bainwa was asked, This is a familiar setting for gamers. How does this game differentiate its take on the setting? He responded, His words, guys. Uh, everybody, clench your butt cheeks for this one. And I quote, we're at the end of Sengoku era. In a turning point of Japan history, Assassin's Creed is well known for its depiction of the history and the accurate recreation of the world. <laughs> Yay! So we, we got, yeah, man, Yasuke, of course, was a real person, right? Was he a samurai or a retainer? We're now finding out that Thomas Lockley lied about him being a samurai, right? And Ubisoft made this game based off of Wikipedia. <laughs> they made this game based off of Wikipedia, right? So that happened. And Yasuke, he was not gay, bro. They made him gay, bro. So they turned a BBC samurai into a gay BBC samurai. And now they're saying it's historically accurate. Like, all of this is accurate, right? Like, where uh, he's destroying, just slicing all of the Asian people in the game while hip-hop music plays in the background. That is historically accurate, man. That's what he, Charles Bainwa is saying, okay? Yeah, and, and then he says, historic history and accurate recreation of the world and it's what players can expect with assassin's creed shadows we're showing real historical figures uh, yeah such as uh, oda nobunaga and a lot of events that happened during this time so you're not only playing in feudal japan but learning about this fantastic <laughs> fantastic time period so they really did say that and that's not it okay i want to show you what else happened okay we're gonna actually get into this one but before we get into this one it is very important to show you what else went down too shout out to dr disaster check this out it looks like we have another sweet baby ink project wait being for released, it, wait for which it. is failing big time and I'm not gonna let anyone get in my way. I'm a failure. Flintlock The Siege of Dawn is releasing today, which we confirmed long ago was consulted on by Sweet Baby. I mean, really, all you had to do was look at the ugly ass female protagonist, and you could probably tell that a company like Sweet Baby was involved in the making of the game. Rumor has it though, that the character was supposed to look wildly different, but Sweet Baby suggested she look like this. And mm. with a pathetic, roughly 400 players playing- <laughs> Bum 
motherfucker. <laughs> Yo, I would never understand why these suckers would hire actors like Sweet Baby Ink. They don't care about gamers though. They don't like games. They want to ultimately destroy your games, bro. If you're a dev watching this video, dog, I wish you the best. Listen, man, I would absolutely hate for y'all to like make a game, spend like hours, billions of hours, your hard-earned uh, money on the project, right? And ultimately see people hit on your projects, right? Yeah, it's a it's a bad feeling you when you work your ass off on something to put it out and ultimately your audience hidden hidden it right like i don't want to see you guys losing your jobs i don't want to see your guys you guys like uh, ultimately seeing your studios being shut down how many times we heard that right like yeah well recently that that game that that, that suicide squad uh, right uh saints rule right people dunked on it and, and also if you're a dev if you're a, pro a professional working at these studios uh, you don't deserve it absolutely you don't deserve it right but if you're uh, gonna make games not for gamers then of course you deserve it at that point right like like come on now man you have writing right the writing is on the wall bro gamers just want games made for game uh, for gamers for them right and gamers are ultimately let me tell you the type of people gamers are right gamers it, listen man when you clown on a game and you uh, okay forget about that right that's gonna be an extreme example let me just give you a realistic example real quick there's a game out there and let's just say somebody gives it a rating Let, let's just say i give the game a rating of 7 out of 10 okay because i felt like that it was objective i felt like that it was uh, decent somebody out there watching that review and somebody out there that loves that game guess what he's gonna be like nah bro you wrong man that, wrong. that that game is an 11 out of 10 even if it's not you know because when you give a game 10 out of 10 objectively i'm not talking about opinions here okay subjectively you can give it even 20 out of 10 right that's subjective but objectively speaking when you give a game 10 out of 10 you're telling me and you're telling yourself you're telling everybody that that game is perfect near perfect uh, perfection it's uh it's a masterpiece nothing in it wrong zero bugs zero this zero that nothing can be uh, improved upon you know what i mean right like so yeah if you give a game 10 out of 10 you're saying it's a masterpiece subjectively you can give it but objectively i'm talking objectively right so if i give a game 7 out of 10 and somebody's watching that review and is like okay well nah man you wrong bro dislike unsub man you see these are the types of gamers uh, we have he appreciates that game though he would go above and beyond to give your game 10 out of 10 if he loves it even if the game is not 10 out of 10 but the opposite is also true if you like uh, add crazy tons of microtransactions you disrespect the intelligence of the gamer the person the consumer that is gonna play your product try out your product if you disrespect him yeah ultimately he's gonna give it one out of ten <laughs> zero out of ten so yeah we have those opposition and we have those extremes as well uh, no, uh basically 10 out of 10s and zero out of 10s like both of them are extremes in this case and none of them are right but see like uh, people would actually go above and beyond to appreciate your product and they want to see your game succeed but when you let activists like sweet baby inc just infiltrate and, and destroy your studio from the inside out and you drop in games that you wish millions would play and when you're seeing like only 400 people play i mean damn homie damn man at that point like like my, my yeah see even my fail sound effect uh, has like <laughs> complications right now even my fail sound effect is not working this thing on steam at the Crazy. time of this recording i'm gonna go out on a limb and suggest that probably that wasn't a very good decision and we can laugh as this game gets absolutely buried hey uh what's that you got wait for it wait oh. for it blah, blah, blah. see how that works Crazy man, subscribe, I'm literally dancing. Shout out to the homie guys, like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Okay, we're gonna skip to that right here. Okay, let's get to the content here, boo boo. Wait Mark for the it. Siege of Dawn, I gotta show with this only too. around 400 players playing concurrently on Steam, I'd say the chances are pretty damn slim that this thing is gonna make any money. I mean, sure, it's a Thursday morning, that's not going to be a maximum traffic time period for gamers, but for perspective, this is what the chart looks like for Elden Ring at the exact Jeez. same time. 148,000 players are playing that. I, I did not buy Elden Ring, I did not play it, but ultimately I was very, very close to it. Why? Because word of mouth got around. People were saying collectively that it's a very good game, and I believe that. I just never uh, had time, I never got around to it, and uh, yeah, never really tried it out. Maybe I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get it in the future. Probably not, gonna be honest though, but you never know, you never know. But, but yeah, this is a perfect example. And also another example, so Concord, you guys uh, saw that coming, right? Con Concord 
for pre-order people, uh, uh, when, when they were running the beta for pre-order people, right? It peaked around 1200 now given that Steam. But for PlayStation, I mean, give or take, it's almost gonna be similar, if not a little bit higher. For free to play, now keep in mind the fact that we're talking and people are clowning on the, the uh, this game right now. Of course, the the, the player count is gonna jump up. I, I'm very aware of that. I guess you guys know that as well. And I'm pretty sure the reason it even have 23 people, uh, 2300 people playing this right now, or currently 2200 people playing this game, the reason is because people are clowning on your game and people are getting aware about your game and they're like okay let me just try it out Wh whatever right but even then this is absolutely pathetic and the entire reason is this people just don't want games made uh by activists okay gamers just want games made for them not the activists bro so yeah this is a perfect example if you're a game dev watching man just just don't do this crap bro we want you succeeding though gamers want you succeeding ultimately gamers want good games bro you want good games we want good games so let's make good games. Simple as that. That game, early on a Thursday morning. Both of the games are single player, souls like titles, but the Elden Ring numbers are what you get when there's an actually popular game that people are excited to play. The Flintlock numbers are what you get when Sweet Baby helps make your game. The game's yeah. journalists constantly try to downplay the effect of Sweet Baby Inc. detected, but come on. There are now over 400,000 Steam users connected to the list. That is over 400,000 people who will not touch this thing. Oh, hell no, I'm out of here. For further reference, The First Descendant currently has over 66,000 people playing that game. So yeah, people play games at all times of day. Just not Sweet Baby Ink games, I guess. Yeah, mm. only 400 people playing the game on the release date. I don't care what time of day it is, that is not good. This is the kiss of death. If you take a look at Metacritic, you can see that the game isn't being viewed as very good, even from gaming journalists, that you just know- Yeah, if the gaming journalists, uh, keep in mind, these are not user reviews. These are based on 18 critic reviews. <laughs> So, you know, the professional, as we like to call the fake reviews, the paid, the shills review, as what we gamers like to call it, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a grandma always say, do not trust the reviews. Do not trust the paid reviews. So, yeah, these are the paid reviews, as you like to call it. 71, that's not good. 70 from paid reviews, that means that game is very bad. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, would love to say that this is the best thing ever. After all, for the people in the media, it isn't about gaming. It's all about agenda. They would love gaming. to see a sweet baby game kick ass, but they can only lie so much, which is why the title is sitting at a puny 71 Metascore at the time of this recording. They have five positive and 12 mixed reviews. Once again, considering that these guys will go well out of their way to push the score as high as they can, this is god awful. What have I done? Well, what you've done is once again, you've made a game that nobody wants to play. It's gonna be just like Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League from earlier this year. A game so pathetic and desperate for attention and- That game is a perfect example, right? Because uh, I, I was, if you have been around the channel, uh, if you remember, I was actually excited for that game. When I first saw the CG trailer, I was like, holy shit, man, that game looks good, man. I want that game, bro. I was like, head in the G-spot prematurely, I have to agree. And when I saw that it was gonna be a live service game, I I'm not even talking about the wool crap in it, right? Like, forget about the wool crap. The game, wasn't good the reason it wasn't good is because like they ultimately let activists make the game forget about the woke crap for a second right yes the game was woke but forget about that for a second the reason it was bad is because they let the activists control activists control the narrative the the project and they ultimately flopped because of it because actual gamers were not making the games or maybe the actual gamers were making the games but but they didn't have control or maybe uh, they were uh, blindsided by the the act was just like a how a man see the pom pom for the first time and becomes blinded. Yeah, exactly. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't just a pom pom, guys. Don't just a pom pom. Uh, check this. For people to play the thing that they recently made it free to play, and now they've just confirmed that the next DLC character is going to be Mrs. Freeze, who is going to be a lesbian, which doesn't make sense because with that name, I'd assume that she's supposed to be Mr. Freeze's wife. It also doesn't make sense because Mr. Freeze is a tragic villain. The only reason he went bad in the first place was to save his wife. Now, now listen, they're, they're of course using LGBT people as shields, but even for, forget about the fact that uh, she is... Uh, you know what I mean? Lebanese. I cannot be saying these words here, guys. I'm not a lone man. Walls have ears too, okay? So, yeah, even though uh, Mr. Freeze is a Lebanese, uh, the character just like, come on, man. Like, damn, homie. Like, damn, man. Like, they really did. Uh, 
<laughs> they really do. Let me actually, this is a perfect example, man. This is a perfect. They really did do that to her. <laughs> Damn, brother. Damn. But now let's actually get down to the Assassin's Creed. Uh oh. Roll this. Surrounding this game has only intensified, especially among Japanese gamers. Now, why is that happening? Well, it's the choice of the main character, Yasuke. This is someone mm. who has been historically labeled as a retainer for many years. However, as you can see, Assassin's Creed has promoted this character as a samurai. Now, curiously, only a month ago, the Wikipedia page had always displayed Yasuke as a retainer, not a samurai. Uh, who served as a servant and a retainer. Yeah, 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 hey, hey, come on, come on, man. Tranquilo, papi, tranquilo, tranquilo. However, over the past month or so, as many games journalists and game developers have promoted the idea that Yasuke is a samurai, we have seen this reflected on the actual Wikipedia page. It has been vandalized over and over again over the past couple of weeks to the point where now there is no mention of a retainer. He is simply labeled as a samurai. Now there's a lot going on here and a lot yeah. of this traces back to a... Yeah, this is that guy that we were talking about. So apparently it is being discovered that Thomas Lockley lied about all of it and Ubisoft ultimately made this game based off of Wikipedia and his book. <laughs> and they're saying that is historically accurate. So uh, yeah, escape. Only black and listen, man. Like they, they absolutely are using black people as shields, bro. They're being racist towards black people. They're being racist towards Asian people, and they're also using LGBT people as shields as well. Oh, absolutely, they are. The Ubisoft, honestly, bro. That this, these suckers are crazy, man. The only black guy they put in the game and they made him gay, even though Yasuke was not. And and it's so disrespectful to the real Yasuke character. I gave this example, and I'll give it again. It's like you doing something amazing in life, and Ubisoft making a game on you. And, and instead of them talking about all your achievements, they just say your biggest achievement was you being gay, when you were not. And if you were, okay, understandable. But it's like saying you were gay, and then in the game they would make you trans. Or straight, let's just say. You would be like, bro, like, hey, man, listen, I don't care whether... I, I mean, of course, you would care or not. I mean, that's up to you, but, but like, listen, you would, at that point, you would be like, bro, talk about my achievements, man. I did this. I did that. I made my mama proud. I did my papa. I, I made my papa proud, bruh. I made everybody around me proud. I did amazing things in life. I did this. I did that. Ubisoft, why you make me gay? Why you make me gay, bruh? Like, come on, man. Like, what? What? you see what i mean right like and of course yasuke cannot come down here i'm like joking a little bit i'm trying to be entertaining i guess uh, but it's true it's true like yasuke can cannot come down here rest in peace man to yasuke the real one i'm, t I'm talking about rest in peace to the real guy no disrespect here man he cannot come down here and defend himself bro and yasuke is are spinning on his legacy like that whether you believe he was a retainer or samurai, I'm not even talking about it. Like, it looks like that he was a retainer, but, but like, damn, bro. Like, damn, homie. Single source. A person named Thomas Lockley. This is a person behind the revisionist history of Japan and the characterization of Yasuke as a samurai instead of a retainer. Now, this book that he is responsible for making has been clowned on for many years now. In fact, users years back were even making fun of some passages of it, making ridiculous- uh, Oliver, okay, so looks like a Japanese uh, person. I'm aiming to publish my article on Yasuke today, but one of my favorite, uh, I'm not sure what's that, claims around him that I've come across in my research is that he had descendants. Plus claims about Yasuke with no real- Thomas Lockley's book, uh, African Samurai, is full of these baseless speculation. Uh-oh, read this hilarious passage. <laughs> oh, shit. Proof. In fact, one of the funniest ones is the fact that this person tried to claim that there were descendants of Yasuke living in Japan and various parts of the world simply because their names sounded kind of similar to Yasuke. Now, there's been a lot of activity on the Wikipedia page, and you can pause and read some of this for yourself, but there has been activity on accounts associated with Thomas Lockley, where he has been intentionally removing and editing various articles that were used to cite Yasuke as a retainer, and eventually, he would use his own book as the primary source to support the, the claim that Yasuke is a samurai, and now, the media and many other places claim he is the expert on the subject, and as people have been criticizing his claims and criticizing his book, he has now taken a leave from social media, basically saying he is not open to any criticism regarding Assassin's Creed and any of the uh, people trying to use his book as a source to back up the claim that Yasuke is a samurai. Now, things have gotten even worse because users in Japan have discovered the work of Thomas Lockley and they are extremely concerned about some of the content contained within that book. So one user here says this, they claim that in his book, 
he tries to push the notion that after Yasuke was considered a samurai given that right, enslavement of Africans became a popular trend in Japan, which is an Damn. outrageous claim with Damn, homie. Damn, man. No real support. And another user here claims that the English version of his text is wildly different from the Japanese version, as if he is trying to hide some of the changes to the English text. On top of that, another user claims that this entire book and various videos and articles that are using it as a source are now promoting the idea among users that there is a racist history of Japanese people towards African people and black people in general, which is a very disparaging thing and is now creating this idea that that is a truth when it is in fact not. And moving forward, things get even worse. That's going to be the theme of today's video. Things. Yeah, yeah, this is something that we, we previously covered as well. Guys, check out this video on the screen because recently Xbox went crazy. Okay, yeah, they're off. Yeah, listen, man, this is a wild story indeed. I'm not sure if you guys were able to catch it or not. This affects PlayStation, Call of Duty, and Xbox. And you guys, I guess, check out this video on the screen. If you have already seen it, then check out the video on the left. I talk about the benefits of not just the pom-pom, guys. This one is for my young kings out there.